Hello everyone. This video will help you to learn more about oxygen therapy in pediatrics. I am Dr. Celis Mary, Vice Principal in Administration at Triplum College of Nursing. Objectives: By the end of this session, learners will be able to define the term oxygen therapy, able to list the indication of oxygen therapy, and classify the methods of oxygen administration and describe the types of oxygen administration and enlist the complication of oxygen therapy. First, we can move on to the introduction of the topic. Oxygen is a colorless odorless and tasteless gas that is essential for the body to function properly and to survive. So it is administered of oxygen in a concentration of pressure greater than found in the environmental atmosphere. This air that we breathe contain approximately 21 percentage of oxygen. The heart relies on oxygen to pump blood. Definition of oxygen administration. It is a process by which the sublimated oxygen is administered in high concentration than that of atmospheric air. Next is about indications of oxygen therapy to whom this oxygen is necessary and who, whom to be this administered. A child with pneumonia and asthma, bronchopulmonary dysplasia, a child who has a nasal flaring, shortness of breath that is dyspnea, respiratory grinding, restlessness, dizziness and rapid breathing, chest pain and for the heart failure child, trauma to the respiratory system. All these conditions, the oxygen therapy is needed. Moving on to the methods of oxygen administration, there are two types, low flow oxygen delivery system and high flow oxygen delivery system. The examples of low flow oxygen delivery system are the nasal cannula, intranasal catheters, symbol mask therapy and partial rebreather mask, non-rebreather mask. And moving on to the examples of high flow oxygen delivery system, venturi mask, uh, oxygen hood, oxygen tent, tracheostomy collar, TPs, CPAP that is continuous positive airway pressure and ventilators. These are the methods of oxygen administration. Next we can see in detail about the types of oxygen administration. First one is the nasal cannula. It is otherwise called as nasal prongs. It is a disposable plastic device with two protruding prongs for insertion of the nostrils connected to an oxygen source. The oxygen concentration is about 24 to 44 percentage. The amount delivered is about 1 to 2 liter per minute and if it is 30 to 38 percentage, the flow rate is about 3 to 4 liters per minute and 38 to 48 percentage, that means the flow rate is 5 to 6 liter per minute. Moving on to advantages and disadvantages of nasal prongs. Advantages, it is safe and simple, easily tolerated by the child. It delivers low concentration of oxygen and able to talk and eat with oxygen in place. Easily it, it can be used in home setting. And moving on to the disadvantage, unable to use with child with nasal obstruction, not good for mouth breathers, can dislodge from the nose easily, drying to mucous membrane so it needs the oxygen to be humidified. Next method of oxygen administration is face mask. The examples are simple oxygen mask, partial rebreather mask, non-rebreather mask, venturi mask. Simple oxygen mask. It comes under low flow system of oxygen. This mask covers the nose and the mouth of the child. It delivers about 35 to 60 percentage of oxygen at the flow rate of 6 to 10 liters per minute. Moving on to the advantages. It is less expensive, can be used in mouth breathers. No risk of airway obstruction or gastric distension. Coming to disadvantages, it is uncomfortable and interfere with eating, drinking and com uh, communication and it requires tight seal, difficult to keep in position for a long period. Partial rebreather mask. The mask is with a reservoir bag that must remain inflated during both inspiration and expiration. It is used to deliver oxygen concentration up to 80%. The flow rate is 6 to 15 liter per minute. The flow rate must be maintained up to minimum of 6 liter per minute to ensure that the patient does not rebreathe a large amount of exhaled air. 
Moving on to the advantages, the inspired gas not mixed with room air and patient can breathe room air through exhalation force if oxygen supply gets interrupted. Coming to the disadvantages, more oxygen flow does not increase the fraction of inspired oxygen and it also interferes with eating and drinking. Next is about non-rebreather mask. This mask provides the highest concentration of oxygen about 95 to 100 percentage at the flow rate of 6 to 15 percentage per liter. It is similar to the partial rebreather mask except one way valve which prevents the inhalation of room air and re-inhalation of exhaled air. Moving on to the advantages, delivers the highest possible oxygen concentration and is suitable for spontaneously breathing patients with severe hypoxia and coming to disadvantages, it's not suitable for long term usage, malfunctions can cause because of oxygen buildup and suffocation and it requires tight seal and it is uncomfortable for the child. Next is about the Venturi mask. It is a high flow oxygen delivery device. The oxygen concentration is about 40 to 50 percentage and the flow rate is 4 to 15 per liter per minute. Each color code represents the precise oxygen concentration and a specific liter flow. It is used for the patient with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Moving to advantages, it is a fixed, reliable and precise FiO2. It does not dry the mucous membrane and high flow comes from the air saving the oxygen cost. It helps in deciding whether the oxygen requirement is increasing or decreasing. Moving on to the disadvantages of new venturi mask. It is uncomfortable, risk for skin irritation and can deli uh, cannot deliver high FiO2 and it interferes with eating and drinking. Moving on to next method of oxygen administration that is oxygen hood. It is used for the babies who can breathe on their own but still need extra oxygen. Hood is a plastic dome or box with warm, moist oxygen inside and it is placed over the baby's head. Oxygen concentration is 80-90%, flow rate is 10 to 15 liter per minute. Moving to advantages, high FiO2 without intubation, suitable for spontaneously breathing patient with severe hypoxia, no ingress uh, risk of airway obstruction or gastric distension and coming to disadvantages it is an expensive and wasteful not suitable for long term usage carbon dioxide toxicity next about the oxygen tent it consists of canopy placed over the entire body of a patient to provide oxygen at a higher level than normal the tent is made up of see through plastic material and a side opening with the zipper and about the amber bag, it is an artificial manual breathing unit. Bag valve mask ventilation is a handheld device commonly used to provide positive pressure ventilation to patients who are not breathing or not breathing adequately. And about tracheostomy collar mask, it is inserted directed into the trachea and the oxygen flow rate is about 8 to 10 liter per minute and it provides good humidity and it is more efficient and it provides accurate FiO2. Moving on to the next method of oxygen administration that is CPAP, continuous positive airway pressure. It is a high flow system non-invasive ventilation and alternative to mechanical ventilation is used to maintain positive airway pressure and to improve alveolar ventilation without the need for artificial airway. It is commonly used for the patients who have congested heart failure, sleep disorders and pulmonary diseases to improve oxygenation and to improve cardiac function. The two types of non-invasive ventilations are CPAP and BiPAP. CPAP reduces work of breathing, increases functional residual capacity and helps to maintain it and improve ventilation perfusion ratio. BiPAP machines have two pressure settings, a prescribed pressure for inhalation and a lower pressure for exhalation. The dual setting allows the patient to get more air in and out of their lungs. And about the complication of oxygen therapy, carbon dioxide narcosis, pulmonary atelectasis, pulmonary oxygen toxicity and retrolender fibroplasia. These are the complications. Thank you.